Act Tech Law Journal, dedicated to trust and estate topics for nearly 50 years. That's the subject of today's Act Tech Trust and Estate Talk. Welcome to Act Tech Trust and Estate Talk from the American College of Trust and Estate Counsel, a professional society of peer elected trust and estate lawyers in the United States and around the globe. This series offers professionals best practice advice, insights, and commentary on subjects that affect our profession and clients. And now, our ActTech Fellow host with today's topic. This is Natalie Perry, ActTech Fellow from Chicago, Illinois. The ActTech Law Journal, which began in 1974 as Probate News, is a high-level academic journal that not only explores tax, trust, and estate topics in depth, but also deals with practical consequences and applications of the rapidly changing rules in these areas of law. Today, the journal's coordinating editor, Professor Ashley Goff, joins us to answer some questions about how topics are selected and how it comes together. Welcome, Ashley. Ashley, why don't you start us off by telling us what makes the law journal different than other law journals? Well, I think we're kind of poised in a very unique place in the law journal market because we have both professional editors and student editors working on our editorial board, which enables us to have a little bit of the best of both worlds. We look at issues relevant to academics and to practitioners, and also even sometimes to law students who are expressing interest in the trust and estates field for the first time, trying to find out what area of law is most relevant to them, while still maintaining a really high level of publication and interest for practicing attorneys and even act tech fellows who are among the most cutting edge in the field. Thank you. Tell us how you became involved with the journal. Well, my journey with the journal started about 11 years ago when the Act Tech Law Journal affiliated first with Hofstra's Law School, now known as the Maurice E. Dean School of Law at Hofstra University. I became involved in recruiting the first year of student editorial board members, which came from the 2L and 3L classes at the school at the time. And we went from having a staff of six very, very ambitious like students to having a staff of almost 40 now, 11 years later, in the course of the recruiting process, continuing from the 2L and 3L classes on an ongoing basis. And as word spread about how great of an opportunity it was to be affiliated with the ACTEC Law Journal, as did interest in recruitment on campus. And from that point forward, we've been very excited to recruit high quality students year after year. That's great. That must really help with the writing for the journal. How does the journal work with the student editorial board at the law school? Well, once articles are accepted for publication through the ACTEC editorial channels and have an additional review with the ACTEC editors, they got turned over to me as the supervisor of the student editorial board to make sure that each of the articles have their sources gathered as our master source files are put together so that if anything mentioned in the articles needs to be pulled up in the future by any authors or people hoping to cite to our articles, we have copies of all of the supporting documentation that would appear in the articles. We also do a full blue booking review to make sure that all of the citation formats are appropriate so that everyone is able to easily access the information that the articles present both in their text and in their footnotes for their ability to use them either in their own legal writing and citations or just for their own educational purposes. Okay. Can you tell us how articles are submitted? And as a second follow-up to that question, do you have to be an Act Tech Fellow to submit an article? Act Tech Fellows and non-fellows are welcome to submit articles through our uh, application channels. We do accept submissions through a Scholastica, which is an online portal that does permit the uploading of articles for consideration to either one or multiple journals. We also accept direct submissions through the portal uh, at journal at acttech.org, the email address for our journal. And once a year, we also do a submission call for papers when we pick a topic that is relevant to the trust and estates field. And the first issue of each volume is dedicated to that particular topic. From there, we would solicit responses to the kind of questionable prompt that is given at the uh, annual meeting. And then from there, the academics and professionals who are choosing to write on that topic have several months to put together their short pieces of about 2,500 or so words responding directly to a very narrow niche topic that would then come together in our first issue, which would be the fall issue for the volume that focuses exclusively on a specific topic. Okay. And tell us about some of the most interesting articles that have been published. Oh, I might be biased on that one. (laughs) 
<laughs> One of the things I really enjoy reading on the annual basis is the contribution from the Mary Mowers Wedding Student Writing Competition winner, because I feel like those student pieces, which are the only student pieces we publish annually, tend to see where the profession is headed. It's not only people who are actively practicing law, weighing in on topics that are relevant to them, but also the things that students that are currently at the very beginnings of their careers are starting to delve into sort of the, the crest of the wave, if you will, of where the legal profession may be heading. Some of those focus on issues as complex as cryptocurrency, and those are very up-and-coming issues even now for practitioners. I keep seeing solicitations for continuing education materials and things like that that people are trying to figure out that as the face of wealth changes, the face of wealth planning has to change. So there are tons of tax-related and intestacy-related and just will probate-related issues with cryptocurrency. Um, so my own personal interest may be somewhat in that area. But I've also really enjoyed seeing things that track changes and proposed uniform laws and changes to different family-based things that are intestacy-based. As the face of a family changes, intestacy has to change too. So in those cases, those are things that I think find a lot of broad applicability because those are issues that practitioners face all the time. And to see those things coming together and having a little bit more exposure to uh, new attorneys or also practicing attorneys has been fascinating for me personally. Okay. Well, you're certainly right about those points that you made. <laughs> can you tell us, can the audience subscribe to the journal? Absolutely. We are happy to offer issues of the journal in the AgTech store uh, if you are interested in purchasing just one issue. If you're looking to subscribe for an entire year, which would be three issues in a volume, that would also be available. You can do so by emailing journal at agtech.org. Thank you so much, Ashley. This has been really informative. I appreciated learning more about the AgTech Law Journal. I'm glad we can be in touch today. Thanks so much. Thank you for listening to this episode of AgTech Trust and Estate Talk the podcast series about wealth planning matters from the American College of Trust and Estate Council. To find an ACTECH lawyer near you, visit ACTEC.org. Please subscribe to this series and leave us a rating or a review. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at ACTECH Talk.